humanity's fear of technological progress is long-standing. If you're living during the Industrial Revolution, it's very likely that the automation anxiety you would have been feeling mimics contemporary headlines that we see. However, past inventions, once considered existential threats, did not materialize as such. While AI does introduce complex, complex risks, labeling it an existential threat is premature and it lacks a solid foundation. Experts disagree about how AI will develop, what the timeline is, and what the level of intelligence that it can achieve. However, history underscores our very limited ability to foresee a technology's exact applications. Our epistemic horizon is incredibly limited. We cannot predict the consequences of our actions in the medium term, let alone the coming decades or centuries. As Kagan noted, there will always be a very small chance that some unforeseen disastrous or fantastically wonderful thing results from our actions. The proposition mustn't only show that, and I quote, a threat exists. That is not the motion. The proposition must show why it is necessarily the case that the disastrous, disastrous effects are certain, branding AI not only a globally catastrophic risk, but an existential threat. One second. This extreme stance is excessively pessimistic and epistemically indulgent, imposing a substantial burden of proof. The opposition acknowledges the potential for AI's negative effects, but insists that a claim as absolute as an existential threat requires far more empirical evidence and epistemic certainty than the proposition has provided. To begin in typical PPE fashion, let's deconstruct the key terms in tonight's motion. AI is an existential threat. Existential breaks down into the physical and metaphysical aspects. First, I will argue that AI doesn't threaten the physical existence of humanity because we possess both, both the incentive and the capacity to implement preventive methods through design and regulation. Secondly, I show that AI doesn't pose an existential threat to the experience and shared understanding of what defines humanity. Also note that the motion is in present tense, while the arguments presented by the proposition are founded on future developments of AI. Powerful AGI, an intelligence explosion, or superintelligence all revolve around whether AI will become an existential threat, not that it currently is. These arguments rely very heavily on hypothetical and abstract scenarios, rather than being grounded in empirical forecasts. Nevertheless, for AI to be a current existential threat, the proposition must show, number one, that AI developments will indeed track these alarming scenarios, and that it is necessarily the case that they will, and that we are unable to effectively prevent such risks. I will attack this second proposition. Firstly, let's address AI design. AI systems don't have motivations or intent. They operate based on pre-programmed rules and objectives that we give them and the data inputs that they learn from. These are elements that human developers can control and constrain. For example, misinformation is such a terrible issue. If we aim to ensure accurate and reliable responses from an AI system, we can limit its data to highly reliable ones, peer-reviewed books, academic journals. Developers can design boundaries and safety features to prevent AI from being programmed to cause harm or to pursue destructive methods for achieving a beneficial goal. When the Aligning AI with fundamental human objectives, such as equity, fairness, anti-discrimination, and sustainability, is crucial to ensure that we're getting what we actually want, not just what we ask for. And active alignment research is already underway at the major companies. Sultan pointed out that the probability of aligning AI 100% and removing all risk is very small. But it's not the case that we expect zero risk with other technologies that we use. Just an example, nuclear energy. Following Nozick's principle of side constraints, we can impose limits within which AI can perform tasks. A self-driving vehicle programmed to follow traffic rules and only drive on public roads is limited in how it gets you to work quickly. Humans not only control the design of AI, we also provide AI with the means it can use. A self-driving car only functions if we choose to fuel it. Therefore, humans exert significant control over AI by carefully considering the means that we offer it and the system that we choose to introduce it into. Taking this back to first principles, AI lacks consciousness and understanding. It is therefore a tool that is reliant on some degree of human direction. If there is an existential risk with AI, it's not the systems themselves, but the humans behind them who pose the threat. 
by regulating and mitigating destructive human actions, AI is not an existential threat. Moving on, there is both an incentive and a capacity for AI regulation. Politicians, lawmakers, and companies worldwide have the incentive to invest in and collaborate on regulatory systems. Why is that the case? Because of the reach and extent of AI to potentially fundamentally reshape our institutions, our public systems, our industries, and our daily lives. Growing public awareness and growing expert discourse on the topic increases the political salience of AI among electorally significant groups incentivizing a regular regulatory response. Substantial attention to AI-related concerns should, in fact, alleviate our apprehensions. Secondly, there is also a capacity for regulation. It is exclusively up to people to establish the rules for how we wish to use AI and how to let it interact with humanity. Robust <laughs> government oversight, transparency requirements, liability for AI developers, and interdisciplinary collaboration are required similar to international agreements on nuclear non-proliferation and bans on chemical weapons, we can establish conventions to prohibit and heavily regulate autonomous weapon systems. Currently, very few players possess the cutting edge computing resources, necessary, necessary chips and hardware, and financial capital to develop and train powerful AI. A significant advantage to regulating only a few players is that it's more feasible. A smaller number of actors facilitates their identification, monitoring, and the alignment of their interests. The model charted by these first movers in military and civilian AI regulation determines the incentives that subsequent countries and companies will face in developing AI. We have the means to enforce preventive measures and avoid AI becoming an existential threat. In the final section of my speech, I explore why AI is not an existential threat to the philosophical underpinnings of humanity. I want you to take a second to think about what makes you human. AI doesn't threaten our consciousness, our intentions and will, our moral propensity, or our creativity. AI cannot compete with these distinctively human features, no matter how intelligent it becomes. The experience and shared understanding of what we consider to be humanity is not under existential threat. Let's delve deeper into creativity, as it was mentioned, AI art, right before. What is creativity? Is it generating something novel by combining existing patterns of information? While AI does satisfy this definition, AI-generated art lacks expression and artistic value. Creativity encompasses more than this rudimentary definition. People or processes are creative to the extent of and because they produce creative products. Products are creative on account of three conditions. They are novel, they are valuable, and they are created with agency. Generative AI products are not creative in the same way that a snowflake is not. You know, it's new, it's unique, it might even have aesthetic value, but it lacks agency in its creation. Art goes beyond aesthetic value. It involves artistic intent, authenticity, the artistic process, and the expression of human emotions and experiences. AI doesn't analyze art and then create its own. It merely identifies patterns and replicates existing styles without actually conceptualizing or contextualizing its creations as art. This means that the AI art, you know, it might sell for a lot of money, but it lacks artistic responsibility. It cannot form genuine artistic expression. You know, the creative process is fundamental to art. It's not just about whether we're using semi-automated processes or even technology as a medium but it's about the absence of an artistic reaction or even an intent in the process, and that's what makes art valuable. You know, we value art that responds to something because it connects us to the lived experiences of other people. So AI doesn't threaten creativity, a distinctively human trait, nor the true value of human creative output. I'm at my conclusion, I don't think I have time, sorry. So, to conclude, AI does not pose an existential threat to humanity be it in the literal or the metaphysical sense. Human direction in AI development is paramount, and we possess both the incentive and the capacity to implement preventive measures for AI risk through design and regulation. Furthermore, distinctively human characteristics will continue to define our humanity alongside AI's advancement. All powerful tools carry risks. The goal is not to get to no risk. 
but it's unjustified to extrapolate, extrapolate these risks to an extreme. There is a difference between a globally catastrophic risk and an existential threat. And the proposition has failed to demonstrate the necessity of the former, let alone the latter. Thank you.